From rocket landings to NFTs, the year 2021 brought incredible technological progress. While a global pandemic devastated our people and economy, it also by necessity pulled forward technological progress in telemedicine, e-commerce, and hybrid learning a full decade virtually overnight. But that may pale in comparison to what the year 2022 has in store for us. First, see if you can spot what's wrong with these viral TikToks. Is Barack Obama finally saying what he actually thinks about Donald Trump? President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Is Tom Cruise really impersonating a snapping turtle? <laughs> if you've guessed those videos are deepfakes, give yourself a hand. Deepfakes is an application of new deep learning technology that can replace faces and speech. The most sophisticated deepfake videos use thousands of images to train algorithms to incredibly realistic effect. In fact, those videos of Tom Cruise even fooled deepfake detection software by training an algorithm on over 13,000 images of Tom Cruise from every angle. Today, anyone with an iPhone and a photo could use free apps to create simple deepfakes. These amateur deepfakes still have a ways to go, but in the coming years, it'll be more possible for anyone to create realistic deepfakes that assume other people's identities. And that has the profound potential to cause harm. Deepfakes are already being used maliciously to swap female celebrities onto other people's bodies, casting them in humiliating, pornographic, or violent situations. Thieves could also exploit deepfakes to commit identity theft, blackmail, or fraud. Imagine getting a call from a kidnapper claiming they've taken someone from your family with deepfaked audio to convince you it's the truth. And beyond that, deepfakes could even shake the very foundation of our civic trust. If we can't tell what information is true or false, that could undermine our belief in media and other public institutions. Politicians could be depicted falsely saying terrible things, or on the other side, politicians could lie and claim videos were deepfaked when they were in fact real. In 2022, look for deepfake technology to move from a novelty to a technology with potentially disastrous implications that forces the world to take notice and respond. But some technology will also change many people's lives for the better, including YouTubers. Twenty twenty two will be the year creator economy tools help influencers successfully transition to becoming entrepreneurs at a massive scale. Being an influencer is already the number one most desired job for the next generation, even more so than being an astronaut or an athlete. And the number of full-time professional influencers has grown 10 times from the thousands to 2 million over the last five years. But it's been almost impossible to actually earn enough money to make it a full-time job, unless you're massive like PewDiePie or Mr. Beast. But now the middle class of creators are taking monetization into their own hands and becoming more innovative as influencers like Mr. Beast have shown the way with out-of-the-box business ideas like like selling food experiences. There'll be a renaissance of creator tools cropping up to help influencers act more like fully-fledged startup businesses. There's been no better time in history to become a creator, and 2022 will be a breakout year for many who want to build the next generation of content and community-driven businesses. One such set of creator tools might employ generative AI techniques, which are increasingly being relied on to help programmatically create content used in movies, music, or even writing jokes. Production studios at Disney, Pixar, and LucasArts employ armies of people to create background characters and scenery. Technology by Unity, Adobe, and many others is getting good enough to offload a lot of this work, and it's only a matter of time before it makes it into the mainstream. AI could also start to play a role in augmenting software development work streams, helping engineers create more reliable code more efficiently. Tools like Amazon Code Guru and GPT-3 are the first steps towards a world in which ML is used in code development through automated code reviews, bug fixes, and more. But beyond these examples, every industry from healthcare to manufacturing still has a lot of manual, time-intensive, repetitive tasks that will benefit from AI. If software has eaten the world, artificial intelligence is the next chapter of that. Doctors will one day use AI to help them uncover the right information within their systems at the right time, along with human-generated diagnoses that humans might miss. AI has historically been a buzzword ahead of its time, as most software, and even those with predictive capabilities, are simple, rules-based engines. But another huge wave of innovation will happen this year as AI turns previously dumb software workflow tools into smart software that frees up time for people to spend on higher value, more creative tasks.
The global pandemic has irreversibly changed the landscape of healthcare in ways we're only beginning to understand. However, there's one area we can speak to with conviction, and that's the transformation of mental health care in the U.S. Depression, anxiety, and other mental health problems tripled in a single year. Americans' own assessment of their mental health is the worst it's ever been in the past two decades. And despite the towering need for services, there's a structural shortage of therapists, psychologists, and psychiatrists. 55% of U.S. counties have no licensed behavioral health therapist, and 70% don't have a single child psychiatrist. Thankfully though, telemedicine has been helping fill this gap between demand and supply, spawning many new billion-dollar companies like Sondermine, Headway, Cerebral, and Grow Therapy. Virtual therapy sessions has become 70% of all mental health visits during the peak of the pandemic. But even then, unfortunately, this mental health epidemic is going to get worse before it gets better. There is hope for 2022 as we see new care modalities expand beyond just texting and video, like therapeutic apps that use game techniques, digital cognitive behavioral therapy, and even chatbots. Many consumers are actually more inclined to disclose sensitive personal information to an avatar or a chatbot rather to a human, a sign of the huge stigma that remains with mental health disease. The global health pandemic has been a giant social experiment that's forced us to test the limits of our healthcare system, but it's also pushed us to the limits of how flexible work really is. Eliminating in-person time in the office for many has just meant that work never ended in the home. In fact, one of the biggest contributors to the mental health crisis has been burnout from remote work. 4.3 million Americans, or almost 3% of the entire workforce, recently quit their jobs as part of what's been called the Great Resignation. As we've learned about the benefits and the downsides of working apart remotely, the future of work will be figuring out how to build relationships and trust for an increasingly flexible workforce seeking to find the right balance of FaceTime and working from home. A big part of this is figuring out how to give the choice back to employees, some of whom are lonely at home and yearn for more connection in the workplace, and others who want to work mostly from home. One of the emerging ideas is a hub-and-spoke model, where companies choose a few select cities to maintain an office. Then employees who want to be in an office can choose to live in those cities, while reducing the number of offices the employer needs to manage. That can make it easier for people to work remote but meet colleagues close by, and in the process, dramatically improve well-being. 77% of businesses believe the lack of social contact during work has compromised employee wellness. While choosing office locations may risk losing workers in the short term, each company must figure out their stance on remote, hybrid, and office work, and provide enough flexibility and choice to make it attractive. Our workplace of the future may also change. It doesn't make sense to maintain massive, expensive offices in the middle of cities anymore. The workspace of the future may increasingly be shared spaces with multiple companies working side by side, and it may be the repurposed remains of brick and mortar retail stores, malls, or movie theaters that are no longer in demand. And finally, it'll become more of a standard for companies to offer benefits to improve office connectivity and well-being, like paid access to mental health services, financial wellness coaching, paid gym benefits, better maternal and paternal leave, and access to professional development coaching. But as the great resignation continues to unfold, many workers will increasingly opt to work for themselves. 2022 will be the year of the side hustle, and maybe the most lucrative side hustle of them all is building your own tech product. This has traditionally been the purview of computer science grads and hackers with years of training and expensive degrees. But no-code tools are maturing to a state now where it's possible to build just about anything without an engineering background. Bubble is a visual programming tool that can be used to build Twitter, Instagram, Dropbox, Airbnb, or even a stock market app, all without a single line of code. This could potentially revolutionize how software development is done and democratize the power of tech innovation to the masses outside of the Silicon Valley bubble. The five most valuable companies in the world are technology companies. But for every engineer in Silicon Valley or another tech hub, think of how many other people around the world could actually think of a technology idea of value. There could be a hundred or a thousand times more people who could now build software. Imagine the possibilities if we unleash the collective creativity of all those people. And it's already starting to happen. Dividend Finance has funded more than a billion dollars in solar projects through its platform, built completely on bubble with no code. Even venture-funded startups in Silicon Valley that you'd think would be able to hire world-class engineers have built entirely on bubble because it's faster and cheaper. And there are numerous other companies like Webflow, which is democratizing the ability to build website without developers, or Retool, focused on internal software within enterprise companies. And 2022 will be a pivotal year in defining and democratizing the power of software development.
Unless you are hiding under a rock, you'll know that 2021 was a banner year for NFTs. NFT marketplace OpenSea is rumored to be near a billion in revenue. NFT-based game Axie Infinity posted more than 2 billion in revenue. And NFT art became the center of the tech bro zeitgeist, with CryptoPunks and Bored Apes selling for millions of dollars apiece. Even though a lot of this revenue comes from a small number of crypto millionaires speculating in assets, the infrastructure around NFTs will continue to mature, allowing more people to monetize digital goods through tokens. The mainstream art industry, monopolized by museum curators, will start to be supplanted by digital artists. And we'll also see increased experimentation from more mainstream brands, like we're already starting to see with NBA Top Shot. Check out my channel for my videos soon, covering some of the most promising NFT projects. As the data that businesses are generating continues to become more valuable, the prize for cyber criminals is also going up. Ransomware attacks like double extortion and crimeware as a service will be a plague on businesses worldwide. And attacks are expanding from just email to all digital channels, SMS and text, Slack, LinkedIn, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and much more. The number of victims here is expected to triple from 20% to 50% of businesses, with the number of companies that pay a ransom to recover their data growing from 10 to 30%. Cyber criminals are going to get more aggressive in destroying data, leaking sensitive information, and disrupting business operations to force companies to pay up. And there's one kind of target that'll be singled out even more than the rest, and that's supply chains. These type of attacks are doubling every year and will soon become the number one global attack vector. Cyber criminals who've grown weary of fighting sophisticated enterprises are increasingly turning to preying on weaker targets. Historically, attacks have been spray and pray, but will now become much more targeted as mission-critical supply chains become potential weapons of mass destruction. One hack in the past year took down Colonial, the largest fuel pipeline in the US, and led to energy shortages across the entire East Coast. Hackers bought a compromised password on the dark web and used it to gain entry into the Colonial Pipeline network through a virtual private network account. The account was actually no longer in use but still worked as a backdoor. Colonial had to shut down all of its operations to contain the attack and then paid a $4.4 million ransom in Bitcoin within several hours of the attack. Cybercrime is a never-ending game of cat and mouse between fraud prevention and criminals who are growing more sophisticated every year. Fraud criminals are taking advantage of the digitization of everything, including the black market with huge vaults of stolen information that can be used to precisely target assets around the world. Fraudsters are also abusing AI to fake user behavior and exploit weak points like first-time logins. Using GPS and device emulators, fraudsters can pretend to be any device anywhere in the world, or hundreds at the same time. Fraud prevention companies will, as always, be looking to be one step ahead. Beginning in late 2022, the first of tens of thousands of low Earth orbit satellites are going to be launched above our planet. These network of satellites will deliver fast, affordable broadband to every corner of the planet, including the final half of the world that's still not connected to the internet, changing the lives of billions of teachers, students, and small businesses around the world. But you and I will likely see the benefit of this as well. Our networks today are designed for low bit rates and intermittent connectivity, especially in remote areas. When we have affordable always-on connectivity, we start to unlock new use cases that aren't possible today. We'll be able to better track and respond to disasters like the California forest fires or flash flooding. Large companies will be able to better optimize remote heavy equipment and facilities. Vehicles, planes, and ships will have access to continuous data streams uploaded to the cloud. Always-on connectivity will enable the beginnings of intelligent spaces and smart cities that we've heard so much about. Maybe the single greatest threat in our lifetimes will be global warming and climate change. Clean tech has historically been a wasteland of technologies that either didn't work or were just too expensive to deploy practically. But we've reached a tipping point of irreversible damage to our future world, one in which we could see massive global water shortages, a crisis in global food supply, disastrous weather that is increasingly unpredictable, large parts of the earth becoming uninhabitable, and millions of people rendered homeless. This is a global extinction scenario that will happen in our lifetimes if we stay the current course. But there is hope in the form of technology. The first step is in reducing new emissions from existing sources through more efficient transportation, renewable energy supplies, and more efficient and sustainable farming. 
The second step is sucking carbon straight out of the atmosphere. We have to figure out how to reverse decades worth of carbon pollution. Even if we zeroed out emissions overnight, there's already enough CO2 soiling the atmosphere to cause irreparable damage. Scientists estimate we may need to take out at least a trillion tons of CO2 in our lifetimes. Reforestation may be a big part of this, as trees are the most efficient way nature has of locking up carbon. So technologists and VCs are looking for more ways to cool and decarbonize the planet, to buy more time for Earth's plants, animals, and humanity itself. What do you think is going to happen in the year 2022? These predictions are always notoriously difficult to get right. No one in the world would have guessed a pandemic would come to define technology deployment in 2021. As Bill Gates famously said, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10. If you're interested in my take on what's possible in 2030, let me know in the comments. And hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified as I make my next videos on how the future of technology will continue to reshape our lives. Thanks for watching. See you next time.